Now this next part is actually hopefully going to be relevant and useful to everyone watching, not just Slender people. I'm going to show a new type of command. Let's just get into it. So in my old script I used to check if off screen. Okay, and then I used a function, a command called vector3 dot. I was finding the dot product of two directional vectors. Now let's just go backwards a bit and step into some different theories and different approaches. Now if you look at a lot of other slender answers, because there's a lot more out there than mine, okay, it's usually to do with the renderer. And particularly checking if the renderer is visible to a camera. Now this is why I deliberately didn't use renderer is visible. I wanted to show another way because in my opinion I could see situations where this would break and it's even specified here in the Unity documentation uh, the scripting reference. Note that the object is considered visible when it needs to be rendered to a scene. What does this mean? It might not actually be visible by any camera but it still needs to be rendered for shadows. So if you had a light source or something that was shining onto your model object and for something to tie it in with the shadows um, appearing onto the scene, then this is a situation absolutely where renderer is visible would break. Okay, and we've got another couple of checks here on became visible to see if a renderer came into the scene, and we still have the same consideration here. It might not actually be visible by any camera, but still needs to be rendered for the shadows. Okay, so if the GPU is doing anything to do with the renderer of your enemy object, there is a chance that it's going to be classed as visible even when it's actually not. So what I tried to introduce was the dot product. Now vector 3, we're working in vector 3's. What does the dot product do? For normalized vectors, dot returns 1 if they point in exactly the same direction minus 1 if they point in completely opposite directions. Now on one of my answers, I brought up an image to try and display this. So let's look at this. If we're here, we're our player, this is my transform. We have my transform forward, our directional vector. So we're looking in this direction, okay? My transform transform forward is facing this way. Now if we have a target, we can create we can calculate a directional vector between us and the target. We've done that previously. Okay, so it's our target position minus our transform position. So that gives us two directional vectors. What does dot product, dot product do? As in the API, if that directional vector we've calculated is exactly the same as our forward, it's going to return a 1. Now, if the directional vector of the enemy is behind us, it's going to return a negative one. This is where these numbers start to make sense. So if we rotate round, here's our enemy, our target. And as we turn around, we start at one, and we're going to slowly come down. One, this will be about 0.5. I've scaled that out for viewing purposes. And then as we get to the side, the dot product would return zero. And as we moved around behind our forward, it would come down to negative one. So it's the same for both sides. This would be 1 coming down to 0. So either side of the player would be return a dot product of 0 and then coming down to the negative 1. So let's build a scene to even demonstrate that. I'm create a new scene. I'm create a new example script. And this will be my dot product example. Say this scene as my example. Okay, let's set up some visuals so we can see what's going on. Now, the main camera is going to be us, but I'm going to start off this demonstration by using objects. So I'm going to create a cube. I'm going to zero that out. And 
all we can see the transform gizmo handles activated we can see which way the cubes face if I click off it we don't know so I'm just going to duplicate that cube I'm going to scale it down okay and bring it a little bit forward so now we kind of like have a visual we have an indicator showing you which way our cubes facing okay and let's make it a child because it is the same object so this is what I'm doing so as the cube rotates, we can see it's forward. Okay, that's what I've done there. Now I'll bring in our target object. And same as before, I'll zero it out. I'll just push it out on the Z so we've got some kind of spatial thing going on there. Okay, for the first example, I'm just going to bring the camera up right above looking down, just the same as the scene view. Okay, so the scene view is reflecting what we can see there. Okay, now I'm going to be moving the sphere around. So even though the sphere is our target, just so that we can see what's happening in the inspector, I'm going to use the script here. Now let's build the script. So, we need to cache our transforms so we can use them in our calculations. So, a variable, just to keep it the same, my transform is a type transform. Then we're going to have a target. Okay, so back to the API. Let's look at this. So vectors, if they point, so we're talking about directional vectors. So let's start there. Let's create a variable, and this will be a forward directional vector, and this will be the forward of our transform. We're just storing this here. So it'll be my transform forward. Okay. Now the transform forward is already a normalized vector. This will only have a magnitude of 1. So we don't actually need to normalize that there. Now, our target, we want to get a directional vector between us and our target. Normally I call it cap direction. In this case, I'm just going to call it other. So our other directional vector will be Let's fix all this up. I've jumped way ahead of myself. Look, let's typecast. Vector forward is a type vector 3, and that will equal our transform forward. Okay, sorry about that. So, I'm declaring a forward variable, and we're typecasting it as vector 3. And we are assigning a value of our transform forward. Now, this is a normalized vector already. It will have a magnitude of 1, so we don't need to normalize that. Now our other, our other directional vector will be a type vector 3. And what will this equal? Now back to our directional vectors, we take our target position and we take away from that our transform position. Okay? So that's how we get our directional vector in relation to us. Now back to the API, I just want to point out the normalized vectors. So for this to work, both our vectors that we're feeding in have to be normalized. That's why I'm specifying the transform forward is already normalized, but here we have to normalize it. Okay, so we've created two directional vectors, us and the other, just like in a diagram. Is us, and then we're going to be calculating from another. So, how do we do that? Let's bring it up. Now, I might make this a global variable just so we can see it in the inspector because that's what I'm trying to demonstrate here the dot product. So, variable dot product, which is a type float, 
and we're not even going to assign any values because we're going to calculate that. So our dot product is equal to vector three dot. Our left hand side, well this is our our vector, our directional vector, and we're comparing it to the other directional vector. Save that out. Right, let's see if we can bring this together in this example. Okay, great, no compilation errors. Now as I said, the cube is my transform because we're trying to work it out in relation to us. But because I'm going to be moving the sphere around, I just have to put the script on the sphere. Okay, so as I said, my transform is going to be the cube because everything's in relation to the cube is forward. And the target is the sphere. Okay, so that scene's set up, so I'm going to save that scene. Now let's hit run and see what happens. Okay, now immediately we've got some kind of result. As I said, our directional forward is the same as our calculated direction to our target. So it's returning a 1. Now what happens as we rotate our target around us? Okay, there we can see it happening. See that dot product number dropping? We're checking the inspector. And as we come to the side of us, it's returning a dot product of 0. Okay, and as we move further around behind, we can see that value drop down even further. So we get directly behind us, and there we have dot product minus one. And then just to prove both sides, we have zero coming back around, and there we have it. There is exactly what I was trying to demonstrate in my diagram. So even these numbers are starting to make sense. But how was I relating this to our camera? Remember I said render is visible had a chance of breaking. So let's just rearrange our scene a little bit. Let's take the cube out of the equation. Because what we're going to be doing now is using our camera. So let's bring our camera back. Well, let's leave the camera at zero. But leave it facing forward. So there we are. So there's us as the player looking out from the view of the camera. And quite clearly there we can see that target is directly in front of us. Alright? So now the scene view is looking from the top so I can move the sphere and the camera is exactly what the player would see. Now let's just rearrange this script a bit now because my transform is now the camera. Let's save that scene again. Alright, now let's work with this as we can see what's going on. I hit play. So you see our sphere is directly in our view, so our dot product is returning one. Now what happens if I start moving that sphere around? Yeah, as we can see. Now the sphere is starting to disappear from our view. Can you see that value there? Just as it goes off screen, it's about 0 0.71, 0 0.72. Okay? So then again, cross-referencing with our diagram, this is starting to make sense. Okay? This is a camera fustrum. Fustrum, fustrum. Can't get my lips around that one. Okay, this is the camera's field of view. <laughs> and as we move around to the side of our looking forward, we get to this point and we're starting to get off screen, as I've visually demonstrated right here. Yeah, we're coming off screen and our dot product's falling down to the 7. Okay. So what was that second value all about? As you can see, here it's slightly visible, but I wanted to give a bit of a buffer to what was happening. I didn't want just the slightest bit of the arm appearing on the screen or something that you really wouldn't notice, or if, if the enemy was even further back here somewhere. So even in the distance, he was much smaller and right next to a tree or next to a bush or something. It wouldn't be quite fair to say that you could see him when you could barely see him. But that's where this second dot product came from, the visible dot range. This was just me giving a buffer to say, okay, let's just confirm that, that whole object is definitely on the scene before we start making choices. See, there we are, I said 0.8, so you see? A decent part of the game object is on the scene. It would be fair to say at this point in time that that is definitely visible. Okay? 
So actually, I'll just stop that and let's just show. I mean, show in relation to the camera view stream. So again, if I bring this out, getting you know, about 0.8, let's say that's visible. Now we can see our camera view stream there. This is our field of view, is reflected here in our camera game view. So if I bring this off the scene, and like I said, see that would be pretty unfair to say you could see that object with you know, definitely more than 50% or even 80% of the object is not on the screen. So I did want to set it to some kind of reasonable amount. Okay, so in a nutshell, that's Vector 3 Dot. There it is in action, working. And as you can see, it has nothing to do with the camera. It has nothing to do with the renderers. It is purely Vector 3 math going on here. Okay, we're just making calculations based on directions. Directions which we know from objects in our scene. So I'll bring up my old script even. That was one of the first things I did in the update. Before the enemy moved or, or did anything, it checked if it was off screen. And there we can see exactly the same thing happening. We get our forward, we get our other in relation to us, and we work out a product. And then we compared it to our off screen range, and then we just determined yes, it's off screen, or no, it's not off screen. Okay, fantastic. 